Let me just grab my notes. <laughs> Let's talk favourites. Hello and welcome back to this cozy little corner of YouTube. My name is Jazz and we are running through my recent favourites today. I have been growing a little compilation of things to share with you and I'm so excited. So let's get into it. So today we are running through books, animes, k-dramas, content creators and a little bit of music as well. Alrighty, let's dive straight in. Let's talk about books. Now, I'm a huge book talk girly. I love book talk and I've only just recently gotten back into like my reading jam. I used to read Till the Cows Came Home as a kid, like all the time, so many series. And then I sort of dropped off for a while and was just focusing on like writing my own work and stuff. And I was just really living out that time in my life. <laughs> and then I want to say it was last year but it could have been the year before. I like started to get more into reading again and Akatar was my first series that I got back into reading with and it was a great series to get back into reading too. And so from then on, I have just been continuing my little reading journey. However, I do a lot of things, have a lot of passions, so I don't have a lot of time to read a lot of series. So I've only read a couple of books in like the last couple of months or whatnot. So let's run through those. Okay. I'm gonna start with this little guy because, <laughs> little, <laughs> because popularity. Everyone was reading this as soon as it came out and I was still finishing the first book. <laughs> but I have finally finished it and I do have some opinions. Don't hate on me. So Iron Flame. I have already like reviewed Fourth Wing I believe briefly in one of my other um, videos and I enjoyed Fourth Wing. I thought it was great. I have heard a lot of complaints kind of about the writing quality and style and stuff but I just enjoyed it as a read in general. I thought it was pretty cool. I was in it for the dragons, let's be real. <laughs> as soon as I heard there was dragons I was like, put my name down. <laughs> but Zayden, Zayden kept me through it. And I really liked Violet for the majority of the first book as well. I thought she was a pretty cool character for the MC. But this book was a completely different story. <laughs> I definitely did not enjoy it as much as the first book whatsoever. I just wanted to get through it for the sake of getting through it. I feel like it wasn't as well written as the first book. The constant fighting and bickering between the two main characters yeah I did not enjoy that so yes overall I did mostly enjoy it but there was a lot of things that kind of annoyed me about the book and I'm kind of dreading reading the next one because I don't know where it's gonna go and <sighs> but I probably will read it just for the sake of knowing what happens with the story but anywho I would probably rate this book like a 5 out of 10 I think yeah. The first book I would rate like a solid 7 out of 10 though. I really liked the first one, but this one, not so much. Okay, here is one of my current reads. Ba -ba -da! <laughs> one of my besties got me onto Brandon Sanderson and he has been raving about this author and this series and as a writer myself I really liked the concepts and everything that he was explaining to me about this guy and his universes and everything and I thought hmm this sounds like something I need to get into and have a little have a little squiz at. So my two friends got me this one and the second book for my birthday and I have started reading it. I'm not super far in um like that's my little <laughs> not a bookmark just a bit of torn up paper um, but that's how far in sorry this way that's how far in I am with the book so far because I've been taking it slow I just want to enjoy this book and really embrace like all this um the intricacies of the world and everything so I have not been rushing it not that I really rush any books to be honest but I mean I rush Iron Flame a little let's be honest <laughs> but so I have been taking my time with this baby and I have been Oh, it's so good. I love it. Already. Already! And look at this. I'm not even that far in. I'm hooked on this 
series this author I am so keen to get into the whole world of Brandon Sanderson and yeah I have nothing but good things to say about this the writing is mm, meticulous um, and yeah it's just the characters so well written absolutely love them all and yeah I'm really excited to see where it goes <laughs> I also read this book recently called The Kingdom of the Wicked and yum that is all I have to say. No, I'm kidding. I have a lot more to say. <laughs> I had this book on my shelf for a little while because I love buying books and then not reading them because I'm already reading a different series. And this is one of them. So I was really excited to actually read it. <laughs> and I devoured this book. Like, oh, I can't even explain. It was so good. So good. Ah! Honestly, it's a, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I can't even explain, like, I was in a massive, ugh, sorry, I was in a massive book slump after finishing the Throne of Glass series because that series was top tier, like, nothing compares to that series and the emotional trauma that I got from it. <laughs> and it literally took me weeks to even just emotionally try and bring myself back from that series and then months before I could even consider picking up another book like I just I can't even fully grasp the the impact that that series has on me and will forever be probably my favorite series I just mm, oh it was just something else in the best way possible everything about that series is just fabulous but yes so this was the book that got me out of my book slump and I loved it. It's more on like the Akatar level, I would say, in the sense of like it's mostly about like the two main characters. There's not a lot of like, there's no other like POV swapping and things like that. And not as like viciously in depth into like the world and you know, massive twisting storylines and things like that. Like, I don't want to say surface level because that sounds bad, but it's a little bit lighter in that sense. Um, and so you can just basically dive into the two main characters and mm, so delicious. The way Kerry ended this book, the audacity. <laughs> so I had to go and get the second book so I could start reading. I was planning on finishing the Brandon Sanderson book before I started this one. But I couldn't help myself <laughs> so I did start this book <laughs> and I read it on the plane to Melbourne and from Melbourne for the AHBL con that was last week so that's when I started this book very fresh and I'm already like halfway through <laughs> and it's probably only gonna take two more reading sessions if I'm being honest to finish this book because <sighs> I'm just eating this up like I can't even, I can't even, you need to read this series. <laughs> There's like one more book after this one, I believe. Um, and then I think she has started like a spin-off series, maybe? I think it might be. I'll confirm that though, because I saw one of her books and it looked like it was from the same world or something, but I'm not sure. So I will put the information here because... <laughs> Alrighty, so that's it for books for now. Okay, let's talk K-dramas. Shamelessly, I will admit, I have been consuming a lot of K-dramas. <laughs> so Dave got me onto K-dramas at the end of last year. I think it was the end of last year. It was like after Christmas or something. Um, and it was with Bloodhounds. So that was my first K-drama experience, watching Bloodhounds. And when I tell you, I binged that show. <laughs> and then continued to binge every show after that. Bloodhounds is a phenomenal K-drama. Oh, so good. I love it so much. And it's still probably in my like top tier, top five 
K-dramas that I've seen. I don't think it's ever going to move from there just because of how good that show is. Let's run through all of the K-dramas that I have watched since Christmas because there has been a few and they are all so good. After Bloodhounds, I moved on to My Name, which was another very similar style of K-drama. Very action heavy with like a great storyline and just emotionally gripping. Definitely recommend watching My Name and Bloodhounds if you're into the more action side of K-drama. They are the shows. <laughs> now, I think, I think my favourite one, and I don't know that it's ever going to get replaced, but my favourite K-drama is True Beauty. Now I know this is a very popular K-drama, but as you know now, I am very new to the sort of K-pop culture world and everything, and I'm only just diving in, dipping my toes in, and <laughs> I've gotten headfirst into this and I'm not backing out anytime soon. But True Beauty was just, oh man, I got so emotionally invested into that show that when it ended, <laughs> I was a wreck. <laughs> I was crying for a few days, I won't lie, and then every time I was watching the, um, like, you know, edits and things on TikTok, oh boy, oh boy. <sighs> I don't think I'm really over that show yet, actually, because I'm getting emotional right now. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're fine. We're fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. But True Beauty was definitely... It's, it's number one. Number one in my heart. <laughs> and you definitely need to watch it. It's just such a beautiful show. Now, K-dramas really slap with zombie shows, okay? So I watched... Um, two movies, A Train to Busan and Hashtag Alive, and they were really good zombie movies, like really good. And then I watched the series All of Us Are Dead. Woo! That series had my anxiety peaked. It was amazing and I loved every second of it. Uh, my adrenaline was high. I really ate that up. I just, I can't even. <laughs> So if you love a good zombie movie, you should absolutely watch A Train to Busan, Hashtag Alive, and All of Us Are Dead. I'm pretty sure there's more, but that's all I've seen so far that I can absolutely recommend. So definitely hit those ones up because you will not be disappointed. And then three final K-dramas that I have seen and one of them I'm currently watching through right now. So The Glory. Oof. It is a slow burn revenge plotline and Oh, it is good! I was so invested. <laughs> I binged through that so fast because I needed to know how things were going to end and it did not disappoint. A Shop for Killers. This one is another action orientated with a great storyline sort of show and it's very new. It's on Disney Plus and it's just kind of come out very recently and I was watching through it as it as the episodes came and then I waited and like kind of watched the rest all in one go because I struggle sometimes. You guys struggles with the episode a week situation when I just want to watch it all. <laughs> I am a binger through and through. It was really nice. It is slightly a little bit slow at the start so you just got to hang in there while they kind of set everything up but uh, execution is amazing and by the time it finished I was like excuse me how dare you? How dare you end like that and then not give us another season immediately? So I am hanging out for the next season of that because it was good. It was really good. And now that everything has been kind of laid out and such, I'm ready. I'm ready for the rest of this show. And then my current watch is My Demon. I am three episodes away from finishing this show, so therefore I'm sticking it in at my faves already because... <sighs> This show has been so good. I really love it. And the two main characters are probably the most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they are absolutely stunning. And the storyline is so cute with this show. And I just love their dynamic and oh, everything is so adorable. So have not finished it yet, but I am already recommending it. Hopefully I don't come back on my next favorites and be like, guys, it broke my heart because I'm not ready for that. Anime! Okay, 
I also love me some anime and I have watched a few anime recently so let's get into this as well okay cyberpunk oh my god that was not what I expected at all I low-key thought it was like a family-friendly anime you know like teens kids orientated no no this is an adult anime <laughs> And it really shocked me at first, because I was not ready for that. <laughs> but it is so good, it's so juicy, and the ending is absolutely devastating. So if you don't want your heart broken, probably don't watch it. But, oh, it was so good. I have already made plans now to cosplay Lucy, and I'm gonna get Adrian to cosplay David, so we can do a little couple cosplay, because how cute! <laughs> but it's a really interesting concept and like the storyline was really juicy as well it was great it just devastatingly oh the ending just devastating honestly whoa whoa that was a shock huh but yeah that was a good one that was a really good one okay solo leveling is a very new anime that's out at the moment and it's been releasing week to week on crunchyroll i am now up to episode 10 so i'm up to date as of at the moment and wow wow it has literally had me and like hooked in since the first episode it's such a different style anime that you just you can't help but be interested and want to know what's happening and just get invested you know cannot recommend solo leveling enough you should absolutely check it out <laughs> the witch and the beast is another anime that's also been releasing week to week now we held off we watched like the first few episodes and then held off so that now there's 10 episodes as well and i'm ready to just binge my way through these but so far it has been so good it's also a very different style of anime that i wasn't expecting either because you know i'm used to watching like naruto one piece black clover chainsaw man you know like all the iconic animes and the witch and the beast has been a little bit of a different change up and i love it and another one that i also have now been like okay cos plans have arrived we are doing the main two characters so <laughs> hold out for that and yeah that's gonna be fun but that is also definitely worth the watch it's a really interesting storyline that's a bit different from like the norm and it's so cool i love it i love it so much <laughs> Now we can't talk about anime without talking about Ghibli movies. <laughs> I am a massive Ghibli fan. I love Studio Ghibli so much. I can't even explain. And I have seen majority of the Studio Ghibli movies. There's like a few left on my list that I am watching through and I just finished, finished? <laughs> finished. I just finished watching um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. That was so beautiful. It's such a beautiful movie. Oh, I love it so much. I really, really connect with the beauty of Ghibli movies and the scenery and everything. It just, the escapism from reality and just how beautiful everything is. And you can just leave this reality and go to the Ghibli world where everything is so pretty and calm and peaceful and just ah oh, it's so beautiful and i love it <sighs> so yes i would love to go to the valley of the wind and go to the jungle because it's so beautiful i just finished watching that one and we also went to the movies to watch the new ghibli movie the boy and the heron now, I'll be completely honest, when I first watched it at the movies, I didn't do any prior research to it. I just went straight in to watch it and I was a little bit confused, I won't lie. There was a lot of moments where I was sitting there like, what is going on? <laughs> Obviously, it still was spectacular and the art form is just always so intoxicatingly beautiful and you just want to be in that world with them. And I loved it overall, but I was just very confused. <laughs> And it was kind of hard to like follow along because I felt like it, the storyline was sort of shifting a little bit. But I feel like that was the whole concept of the movie though. Which, after I finished it, started seeing a lot of articles pop up about the movie and running into details of the whole movie and how it was a like partial 
autobiography thingy of the creator of the movie and so I was like ah oh, that makes so much sense and then it runs through all of the little details in the movie and what they symbolize and relate to and mean and it just it made so much sense and then my love for the movie just grew tenfold Okay, here's to hoping that that all actually recorded because it just stopped recording on me and I'm like really scared now. I have such a deep love for that movie now and just a greater understanding of it and yeah, it was it was such a good movie and I absolutely recommend watching it because just like all Studio Ghibli movies that I have seen so far, they do not disappoint and they are just an artful masterpiece, honestly. Okie dokie, so let's just pause on to music and artists because I only have a few in this category before we jump over to content creators. But as I was saying, K pop culture era and K pop or K rock, <laughs> I have been eating up some of this music, guys. The Rose is currently my favorite band. I, yeah. Okay, The Rose's latest album, Jewel, that just came out like super recently is so good. I love all of the songs on it. I've been binging through that album repeatedly and <sighs> no regrets, honestly, no regrets. Back to Me is like my favorite song. I have also just been listening to some of the music just from Wusong as well and I really love his sound and his music is just <sighs> perfection. <laughs> so I'm absolutely <laughs> I'm absolutely thriving off this genre at the moment, but then I also have a few other artists that I am absolutely loving. So, on the weekend, I went and watched one of these bands that I am very new to and am already obsessed with. One of my good mates is friends with the, like, the lead singer in this band that's like a local band and their name is The Local Romance. And they were debuting their first single live. So obviously we went and checked it out because it's like punk grunge rock vibes and I am all here for that music. I absolutely froth that kind of music. So we went and listened to that live and it was phenomenal, like absolutely insane. Check it out. It's called Babylon and I'll pop it right here for you from the local romance. The only problem that I have is that they're so talented and the song is so good. There's not an album or anything else to be able to binge listen to after that. So you just gotta play that song on repeat, baby. Like there's no other option until an album comes out. Okay, so we just, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta deal with that at the moment. <laughs> and I love Taylor Acorn. Okay, she's an absolute vibe and I also got to see her live at Melbourne if you saw the last vlog that I posted. If not, you should check it out. So she performed live as well and hearing all my favourite songs from her live was oh, absolute pop off. Like I can't even explain how amazing that was to experience. And she had someone headlined for her called Chez and Chez was also amazing. So now I have another favourite artist because she was spectacular and she just released a song called Liar Liar. When I tell you I've also had that song on repeat at the moment, believe me, it's good. It's really good. <laughs> so you definitely should check out that song because yeah, she is very talented as well. And if you don't know who Taylor Acorn is, definitely go listen to her music because she slaps. Like, oh, she slaps. Now, Lado, my man, I love this guy. His music is phenomenal. I started following him like ages ago when I first heard um, Houndin, which I feel like is, you know, one of his most iconic songs, but I listened to that shit on repeat. I won't even lie. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and I have not stopped listening to his music since then. And every release, you betcha, that song is favorited. And I am on a loop. <laughs> and he just released a new song called Rodden. It, mm, yeah, it really hits the spot. It's such a good song. So that is also one of my most recent favorites. And as well as the band Voila, I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. Like it looks so easy to pronounce until you start saying it out loud. And then I'm like, I don't know, I'm broken. Yeah, but they also released a new song and I love their band so much. It is such a vibe. 
and they released a new song called Something Blue and oh it is also a banger okay <sighs> Literally my favorites list at the moment is just all these artists and I just keep shuffling through them so I can listen to it again and again because I can't get enough of these people. Their talent is just through the roof and I love it. I'm here for it. Okay, let me get up my list of content creators that I am obsessed with at the moment. Alrighty, so <laughs> She's L, who is on Instagram and YouTube. I cannot put into words my love for this artist. She is such a massive inspiration for me. She is a artist that does the cutest stickers and merch. I am literally in her sticker club because I want one of those stickers every month, okay? <laughs> and I have most of them stuck to my water bottle because I need to see them every day. Like, I just, I can't even fathom how much I love her art style and it's just so beautiful and unique and it has like a lot of inspirations from like Ghibli and really like the nostalgic stuff that I love like the Powerpuff Girls and Sanrio and just all the things I'm obsessed with okay <laughs> and she makes these cute as stickers and pins and like key rings and stuff and it's just so good so Yes, she's L. She has a YouTube channel and she does the best vlogs, like aesthetic vlogs. I always watch her stuff and I just dream of the day that I can create content as beautiful as hers because, oh, it just blows my mind. I love her content and her Instagram is like exactly the same. It's just always the most aesthetic and beautifully articulated videos just hitting those like nostalgic feels and artsy love so <sighs> she's L is where it's at <laughs> uncomfy uncomfy is another artist I mean I, are we surprised no no we're not because I'm also a little artist and I love seeing other artists that have made it in this space with a similar style and like aesthetic vibe as myself so yes Uncomfy is an amazing artist that does like all these like clay little sculptures and things and she shares like heaps of vlogs like business vlogs and like useful information that I have been eating up so that I can learn from her because she's so successful in what she does and is just a beautiful kind of role model to have so Cozy K or Kennedy is another YouTuber that I also follow on Instagram as well because cutest decor videos and things like that but Kennedy does all these cute cozy YouTube videos and I absolutely adore them so much and they're just so calming to sit down and watch and just chill out to and yeah she just uh, does an amazing amazing job with all of her videos and I can't get enough of them so good so very good <laughs> and those are my top three favorite youtubers and content creators in general at the present and I am watching a lot of other just like random creators that have similar style videos and you know art stuff I'm learning a lot about different aspects of art things to make products as such because I've only ever really done art I've never done it in the sense of being able to create a product out of it and sell it so I'm doing a lot of research with that at the moment and spending a lot of time on that hence I have not been able to binge through a lot of other great artists on and creators on YouTube and Instagram at the moment well that brings us to the end of the video today I really hope you enjoyed this and that you got some great recommendations out of it and if you did enjoy it I would absolutely love you forever if you liked and subscribed to my channel and I would love to see you here again so if you enjoyed please stick around and catch me at the next video all right all my love bye